Tim Duncan is one of the greatest players of all time, and I don't really think too many people debate that. However, the arguments that I hear about his career in an attempt to marginalize what he achieved, my goodness, it, it's, it's mind-numbing sometimes. So in today's video, I'm going to shed some light on some of the misinformation that is constantly spewed about Tim Duncan. Now, the first myth that I have to dispel about Tim Duncan in his career is his concept of him not being dominant. Which is amazing to me because on the surface, when you look at Tim Duncan's accomplishments, they should really speak for themselves. And I appreciate y'all so much for tapping in. Man. Hmm? I definitely appreciate y'all, man. Um, today, I'm sticking to it because this is it's it's really terrible to our community. It's really terrible to the conditions of our people, man. Um, I'm talking about this damn music. Music is not politics. Music, let me say that again, music is not politics. Especially in the black community, or just the modern community of America, because most of the young people, everybody's so influenced by the music, we're all pretty much in the same boat now, you know, other than um, a lot of the other races and communities and stuff, their families are still in place and their families are still um, passing down shit and holding down shit and passing traditions and money and different things down. But in the black community, we pass down music to our children. We pass down, and I'm not talking about an artist showing his child how to make music because that's a craft, that's a trade. Um, I'm talking about if you're one of those people who every waking moment of your life you're filling your time up listening to music, you got a big problem on your hands. Um, if you're one of those people who, when you wake up in the morning, just to get started, you gotta turn some, some music on that you didn't create uh, to listen to, just to get motivated to live. Now, um, this this is gonna prove right now, real quick, the, the motive, the, uh, mind control and the music because this shit is so broad and so vast and they're so smart they they hire um, musicians for every genre for every field for every um, what do you call it perspective every um, group of people there's a musician that'll um, either speak for them or just um or appeal to that group. So <clears throat> you'll wake up in the morning on a get the day started, clean up mood, or whatever you do in the morning, get your breakfast cooked. You'll put some music on to complement that mood. And that shows you that the music is, it has that type of control over you, your effect or effect over your mood and, your, and the way that you, it just affects the way that you feel. Say if you're gonna, um, you're trying to. We're talking about a player who was selected to be an all-star 15 times, selected to 15 all-NBA and all-defensive teams, two regular season MVPs, three finals MVPs to go with his five championships, and a player who's recorded over 25,000 points, over 3,000 blocks, and over 15,000 rebounds. But yet, for whatever reason, people still make this argument that he isn't quote unquote dominant or that he wasn't dominant enough. Maybach music. But that's all part of the brain control. It's all part of the brainwash. <clears throat> because you could if you if you're self motivated, you don't need nobody yelling in your ear in a high tempo beat playing in the background to do what you need to do. You're gonna do what you need to do. Um, there's more than one way to live, so I'm not telling nobody, you know, don't listen to me. We gonna be all right. all right. We might have a road ahead, but we gonna be all right. All right. We gonna be all right. All right. They say we don't stand a chance, but we gonna be all right. All right. We gonna be all right. All right. We might have a road ahead, but we gonna be all right. All right. 
we gon' be alright They say we don't stand a chance, but we gon' be alright, alright My flow would be so hot, man, it might start to sizzle Time hit the beat, make you turn it up a little Watch who come around, they'll play you like a fiddle We don't know which way to go, like we stuck in the middle When them haters come around, tell them you just missed them We can't see the solution, cause we focused on the issue I cry my eyes out, I ran through a box of tissue When you take a look around, and don't see nobody with you The children are our future, their foundation is tremendous We all need unity we can take off like a missile Between me and you, we can keep it comfortable This is kind of hottest rapper out And I think it's plain and simple I'm him, we gon' be alright We might have a road ahead But we gon' be alright, alright We gon' be alright They say we don't stand a chance But we gon' be alright, alright We gon' be alright, We might have a road ahead But we gon' be alright, alright We gon' be alright, they say we don't stand a chance, but we gon' be alright, alright. Cartoon Network. How much this music has control over us. And it's not politics, it's not um it's not the end all be all, it's not what we should be basing our people after. And then sad to say it is right now. It's um we're basing it's like the basis of society. Music is like, um, it's the, the stamp, the, uh, the standard for the way people want to live. Because if you look at most urban people, black people, they all dress like rappers, the men. They all dress like rappers, whether they're rich or not. Um, they want to have chains on, they want to have the jewelry on, they want to have uh, designer clothes on. These are usually poor, poor motherfucking people. Poor ass people with two three thousand dollar shirt on. Uh, I mean, a two three thousand dollar pair of shoes on, a five hundred dollar shirt, a thousand dollar pair of jeans, and these are broke people who will cash out to just to just to appeal like a rapper, just to look like the rapper, their favorite rapper. Uh, then they listen to his music when they put the clothes. I mean, it's just it's very sad if you can understand it. You know, um, I just wish. We, as parents, we're supposed to guide the, uh, the children and the next generations of how to be better additions to society and, and not fall victim to society. Because a lot of the things that we're out here mimicking and emulating is leading us straight to jail and hell. How many young brothers do you know that got shot and killed? And then ask yourself, in the midst of them being shot and killed, was there any music playing in the background? The niggas who went and killed them, the people who went and killed the people, were they playing music? For them to put him higher on their top tens list. But even with the accolades and stats out of the way, I do believe that a huge reason why people make these claims is either A, they're just young and don't recall Tim Duncan dominating in the early 2000s, which is something that is definitely noteworthy because most of Tim Duncan's most impressive feats were accomplished within his first 10 years in the league. So yeah, if you're young, you're just not gonna remember that. We pray for the day, but we focus on the bar. When you realize the truth, it's a hard pill to swallow. We can all come together, but I all look so shallow. We focus on the past, need to leave it in the shadows. DJ Cartoon! Was the type of music that they were playing on the way to go kill this person, that spin music that, you know, because this shit been going on since the 90s. I mean, since the, since the back in the day, it been going on. It been going on, you know, it was just gangster rap, murder rap, this and that. And the music has slowly transitioned everybody into a faster, more violent pace, you know, and people say it's- We praying for the day, but we focus on the mark. When you realize the truth, it's a hard pill to swallow. We can all come together, but I, I look so shallow. We focus on the past, need to leave it in the shadows. We praying for the day, but we focus on the mark. When you realize the truth, it's a hard pill to swallow. We can all come together, but I, I look so shallow. We focus on the past, need to leave it in the shadows. Let's go. Find a solution, must admit it's a problem. 
Um, we all lean in the chain and we all need each other. If we help one another, we can go a little farther. Class, race, and religion, not just here for us to argue. We all race the clock. Really, we all partners when it all fall down. You can't hide under the cover. I tried to give us hope, but the horse ain't want no water. I can show you the way, but we steady going under. When you had a time to think, like Stevie, it make you wonder, is it something I can do? To get this thing in order, you can only change yourself Spread the message to your brother, do what you can now Cause it's too late when it's over, I'm we here We praying for the day, but we focus on the mark When you realize the truth, it's a hard pill to swallow We can all come together, but I, I look so shallow We focus on the past, need to leave it in the shadows We praying for the day, but we focus on the mark When you realize the truth it's a hard pill to swallow We can all come together But our outlook so shallow We focus on the past We believe it in the shadows Let's go But to be honest with you The only way to know Or the only way that you're saved from this shit Is to have the knowledge of it And uh, look out for it And not fall victim to it You know, not participate Fully participate in it Um Knowledge is power, you know, wisdom, you know, wise man. Wisdom is like gold, you know, but uh, I just wish people would stop. Like right now, with all the things that are going on in the world, uh, all the potential things that's coming, the food shortage is coming, uh, inflation that's happening right now, uh, prices of everything quite, uh, almost doubling and sometimes tripling depending on what you're buying. Um, the scarcity of items, uh, car parts, and different things of that nature. There's there's some scarcity, real life shit going on right now that we need to be focusing on as a people and as a nation. But we're so bullshit and talking about Kanye West when you don't even realize that. And I'm gonna make another video about that too. I'm gonna tap in about that later. But y'all don't even realize that their powers that be are letting that man say how he really feels. They're letting him express himself on a national stage. And he gets to say the things that he's been wanting to say just to distract people because there's some major shit going on that y'all are not even aware of. There's so many major things going on that people aren't, aren't aware of that it just blows you. It blows you when when you can see what's really happening. <clears throat> I, I can't. I just can't believe it, man. Y'all need to stop listening to this music. Uh, it's not a culture because the key word of culture is a cult. So are y'all cult members? Hmm. Are you a cult member in the culture? Caught up in the rapture? Finna get caught up in the rapture? better wisen up, raise up and learn something man uh, prepare your life to be lived into the future because the, the poor man's thinking about today the rich man is thinking about the future the poor man is thinking about how to survive through the day the rich man is thinking about how to pave the way for the future so he can dictate the pace that, that everything's going on and how do you dictate the pace of things that's going on for a bunch of simple commoners? You put some cool ass music in there with poison and you teach them how to be. And after you listen to something more than five or six times and you memorize it, it becomes a part of you. And then you embody that shit. You know what I'm saying? You embody it and you start, it'll start acting out through your actions, your ways, and your walk, words. It's, it's very easy to understand. Y'all are just not thinking deep enough and not understanding that thing, everything that's presented to you is not good for you. You know, listen to some positive music. There is positive, good music out here. It's just mostly up and coming artists. You gotta find you an up and coming artist who ain't talking about drilling and killing and sending them and, and spinning. You know, cause that's some fucking bullshit. 
when we're the ones that. But also, and more importantly, when it comes to dominance, for whatever reason, people tend to immediately try to correlate dominance with how many points a player is scoring. And when it comes to Duncan, he ended his career with an average of only 19 points per game. And throughout his prime, he was only able to have an average of over 25 points per game once. However, that ideology is flawed for multiple reasons. For starters, Tim Duncan was active during the slowest pace era within the last 50 years of basketball. And not only that, he was playing on one of the slowest teams during the slowest pace era within the last 50 years. So there just weren't that many possessions for Tim Duncan to consistently average 25 points per game. However, I mean, if you look at Duncan's scoring averages, we're talking about someone who was averaging roughly around 22 to 23 points. So trying to marginalize what he accomplished when it comes to scoring, just because he was off by two or three points is a bit of a stretch. But what's even more undeniable is that Tim Duncan's dominance was more so felt on the other side of the floor because defensively, Duncan is one of the greatest players the league has ever seen. I don't really like using defensive metrics largely because they are a massive misrepresentation on the impact that a player can have defensively. But even if I were to do so, Tim Duncan's defensive metrics are godlike. Everything from defensive ratings, defensive win shares, on and off numbers defensively. And even if you want to just look at something as simple as blocks, Tim Duncan actually holds the record for most postseason blocks in NBA history. And I would deem it's an unbreakable record because the next player on that list is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And even the gap between Kareem and Duncan is a noticeable one. And then after that, we're talking about Dwight Howard or Anthony Davis is the only other two active players on that list. And yeah, I, I highly doubt they're going to pass Tim Duncan anytime soon. Also, when it comes to unbreakable records, another one that Duncan holds is the most all defensive team selections in NBA history with 15. And the only reason why I'm able to confidently state that no one is going to be able to surpass that is because A, you would have to at least play in the league for 16 years, and B, you would have to play at an elite level defensively from the beginning of your career as a rookie, which has only happened five times when a rookie was named to an all defensive team. Those five players are Michael Jordan, Hakeem Olajuwon, David Robinson, interestingly enough, Manute Bowl, and of course, Tim Duncan. Yes, Duncan, as a rookie, was selected to an all defensive team, all NBA team, was an all star, even received some MVP votes and led the league in double doubles as a rookie. So again, this concept of Tim Duncan not being dominant is amazing to me. And also, if you are someone who is looking for some more dominance offensively, just go look at Duncan's postseason numbers. Unlike a lot of other players, Tim Duncan's numbers actually went up during the playoffs, especially his scoring numbers. And keep in mind, for the most part, That's how I mean at first. It don't bother me no more. When I show up to the game, leave it all on the floor. They try to keep us out, but we pushing down the door. We pushing down the door. Let's go. 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 Let's go drinking the best of drinks and smoking the best of smoke and having the best of sex while poor people is out here killing and spinning and drilling each other on these fucking streets leaving each other dead cold on the fucking concrete imagine man imagine your mama having to see your body stretched out cold on the concrete because you got hit up with a bunch of bullets because you wanted to be in the gang because you've been listening to rap music your whole fucking Imagine your mom. They clown me at first, it don't bother me no more. When I show up to the game, leave it all on the floor. They try to keep us out, but we pushing down the door. We pushing down the door, let's go. They clown me at first, it don't bother me no more. When I show up to the game, leave it all on the floor. They try to keep us out, but we pushing down the door. We pushing down the door, let's go. This world's so diabolical, there's no way we can deny it. When you open up your eyes, you can see the bottom line Time pick up the microphone, then you know it's going down This that food for the soul, everybody gather round Sell they soul for chicken change and clothes they can't pronounce They got diamonds and gold, we still trying to make it out They still come around hating, I don't know what that's about Teamed up with Bay they cooking up our own sound I keep on looking forward, they keep talking on the side We run to the town Telephone, playing games on our mind If you know what time it is Then you know I'm just in time If you look hard enough There ain't nothing you can't find They I'm clown young. me at first It don't bother me no more When I show up to the game Leave it all on the floor 
They try to keep us out, but we pushing down the dough. We pushing down the dough, let's go. They clown me at first, it don't bother me no more. When I show up to the game, leave it all on the floor. They try to keep us out, but we pushing down the dough. We pushing down the dough, let's go. Hey mama, we got come and have to take a look at the prostitute crack houses and shit Cause you wanted to listen to that bullshit music and be a whore And be promiscuous with every man you met Because of the music you listen to It conditions you into feeling comfortable doing things that In your heart you know ain't right Y'all better wake up man, it's your big homie Big Bad man we are not discussing a player who was getting knocked out in the first round consistently. Now the second statement that I constantly hear about Tim Duncan in an attempt to discredit what he accomplished throughout his career is that Tim Duncan received too much help, which is, is so laughable on so many levels, but yet still so disappointing because for whatever reason, and I just don't understand this at all, so many people have failed to realize that there's absolutely no way that anyone would ever achieve the amount of success that Tim Duncan received throughout his career without having some help, let alone the amount of help that he had throughout his career. But even that amount of help, in contrast to a lot of other all-time greats, really is not as much as many people are trying to make it out to be. Now, when people make this argument, there's normally two sides of it. First, you have the teammates, and then you have the coach. Let's tackle the teammates first, and then we'll talk about Popovich later on. First, when it comes to the teammates, people always reference the Hall of Fame talent that was constantly surrounding Tim Duncan, in reference to Kawhi Leonard, David Robinson, and of course, Tony Parker and Andrew Nobu. First and foremost, I've discussed this in the previous video, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but the Hall of Fame argument is literally the most ignorant argument that is constantly used in the NBA community. Stop being lazy and acting as if like players who eventually made the Hall of Fame were all playing at an elite level throughout their entire careers. It is just factually incorrect. It's ridiculous when people do this, especially in reference to Tim Duncan's teammates, the most noteworthy ones being Kawhi Leonard and David Robinson. Granted, more people are starting to recognize I like to give a big, uh, I like to say all these rules, all the, what I'm saying doesn't apply to everybody, right? First and foremost, if it doesn't apply to you, then it doesn't apply to you. If the shoe fits, where? All of my life. We did what it takes to win. Don't look up to the stars, man. It all come from within. All of my life. Man, here we go again. They try to shut us down, but we keep on going in. All of my life. We did what it takes to win. Don't look up to the stars, man. It all come from within. All of my life. Man, here we go again. They try to shut us down, but we keep on going in. Johnny says her name, my character, society's diluted I'm a little old school, man, I'm more like Patrick Ewing Going down in history, one of the greatest to ever do it Put the truth in our face, we act like there's nothing to it We standing at the tunnel with no one to lead us through it Why they call you just in time? Cause I'm trying to start a movement The proof in the pudding, but the pudding's an illusion Believe half of what you see, and none of what they doing I make these words rhyme, it makes sense you listen to it I leave you with a message after that, my point is proven I put art back an artist in this world of mass confusion When it comes from the heart, it's a little more than music, I'm him We need what it takes to win Don't look up to the stars, man, it all come from within All of my life We need what it takes to win Don't look up to the stars, man, it all come from within All of my life Man, here we go again They try to shut us down, but we keep on going All of my life We need what it takes to win Don't look up to the stars, man, it all come from within All of my life Damn, son, where'd you find this? Who fits? Where that motherfucker? This isn't disrespect. See, the thing about, and I'm gonna speak from black perspective because I'm an African American man. I'm 
indigenous American man. Let me speak from from my perspective. We don't talk about nothing to fix problems in our community. The black community or the, you know, the indigenous community has learned to this is trap music. Uh, forget or bury traumas or um, ignore traumas. That'd be the main thing they do. We have a, we as a people have we ignore traumas because for whatever reason, some people might not be strong enough to go through things. Some people might not have the support to get to get through it. Some people might not have you know. This could be a, a multitude of reasons why people, um, you know, black people don't deal with their traumas. But I'm going to say one thing. Black people need to get help. And um, a lot of us need to get help. And I, was just, I just wanted to ask the females, because I'm out here, man. I'm a single man, single father. Um, didn't ask to be that way coming out of a failed situation. I didn't ask for it to be that way, but you can't make nobody want you. You can't make nobody uh, stay loyal to you. None of that shit, you know what I mean? Uh, you can't cry over spilled milk either. So, what I want to say is, what, what happened to y'all females? It seems like, you know, this is not a disrespect or a pot shot at nobody. I'm just going to call the observation. I'm calling it what I see. It seems like the females have got turned into males. And then the same vice versa. It seems like the males are being turned into females. I'm talking about internally. Uh, it used to be back in the day. The females were more the homebody. They were more the stable. They were more... Uh, I would say not wiser, but more structured and shit like that. Women had to hold it down. They had to uh, maintain the families and all that. But I guess over time, they said, fuck that shit because they wanted to have some fun or whatever. I don't know what happened exactly. Maybe it was the, these various movements we have going on, the feminist movements, the alphabet movements, the different movements we have going on that divided us more than anything. Just explain it to everybody else because I don't think everyone thoroughly understands this. Kawhi Leonard was not in his prime when he was playing alongside Tim Duncan outside of possibly the 2016 season. And that's it. And then when it comes to David Robinson, thanks to a back injury that shortened his prime and the same injury that positioned the Spurs to draft Duncan, he was no longer the same player either. Granted, both of these players are or at one day will be Hall of Famers. However, the accomplishments and statistical accolades that were received and earned throughout their careers that gave them the Hall of Fame status was done while not being Tim Duncan's teammates. I don't understand why I have to stress that enough to people, but again, it just, it, I, I, my goodness, it's just ridiculous how simple-minded some people can be. But again, most people understand that.